I don't What's know your you... favorite fashion documentary? That's a good question. Um, Catwalk is definitely at the top. It's pretty good. Yeah, Catwalk. I thought Catwalk was really good. I think I was saying to you earlier, a lot of people grew up dreaming about moving to this city and you yeah. were already here. So where do you go from there and, and how does that kind of shape you as a person? Obviously I knew I was gay at a very young age and suddenly in the city there was a possibility to just be that. Mm -hmm. And um, I started hanging out downtown really young, like 15, and met my group of friends that still to this day are like my best friends, kind of dancing on tabletops downtown. That kind of childhood it just meant that there wasn't that much to do after that in terms of kind of wanting to explore. It happened at a rebellious. very young age for you, yeah. Yeah, I think very early on I figured out who I was and what I wanted to do. And I think I, I really credit New York for giving me that. Really had to be self-reliant and really had to just figure it out and learn how to be by myself and have that be okay. Um, I think it really did prepare me mentally for the rest of my life. Because even when I was assisting and working for Joe, the pace that we worked was extraordinary. You know, there'd be months on end where you wouldn't go home. I mean, the amount of my mother's birthday happens to fall during Paris Fashion Week. The amount of times I've forgotten to call her during her birthday is crazy. The amount of times I've forgotten my birthday, which is during shows as well. You, know, you say Joe, you mean Joe McKenna? Joe McKenna. So at what point did you meet him and how did that whole relationship start? Towards the end of my time at Love, I found out that Joe was looking for an assistant and I emailed him actually on my birthday. And he emailed me back in very Joe fashion, literally about four minutes later. And I met him the next morning. And the rest is history. So you were with him for how long? Five years. Wow, that's quite a stint. Yeah. And how do you think that shaped you as a stylist in terms of experience? I mean, I can't understate the importance of my time with Joe or just his, just how strong of a mentor he was how seriously he took that role, um, how much he taught me, not only about the industry, but also how to, how to work as a stylist, how to be an independent contractor, how to run a small business, um, how to be professional. Do you find yourself looking at that kind of um, archival background of our industry uh, with reverence, or are you sort of a little bit? I'm so influenced by things that are familiar to me, mm -hmm. um, things that I have loved. I think mm -hmm. your point of view is shaped by the things that you have seen in your past and the things that you carry with you. And what I try to do is modernize that. You know, I take mm -hmm. a bit from here and a bit from there and a bit of something that hasn't happened yet, something from the future, jumble it all up and hopefully come up with something that feels like me or at least new. So you think it's important, though, to have context for what's happened prior to your arrival in the business? For, for myself, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's a big part of my process. I think that there are people who are pure constructionists, mm -hmm. and they want to just create something from the ground up. Mm -hmm. And if they've seen anything even similar before, you know, it's wrong. But I, I don't feel that way. I think that there have been a lot of really amazing things that have been created. And, and if I can expand upon that or, you know, maybe comment on that or... Mm -hmm. You know, there's been times where I've been really inspired by a shoot, and so I want to kind of react to that. And yeah, I don't find anything wrong with, with referencing the past. I actually really enjoy it. Edward said to me one time that he felt one of the great benefits of having come up in the business at the time that he did was that he was afforded the luxury of kind of learning as he went along and making mistakes along the way. Yeah. And he didn't necessarily think that was true about people coming up in the business today, given that it's become such a public forum that you're operating in. Do you, sure. do you feel like there's any truth to that? Or do you just think you don't know any different and it's all kind of normal? No, I think that there is a huge pressure today to perform. I think that the moment someone has a good moment, a good shoot, a good cover, and they get a certain amount of attention, there is really this pressure to perform. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it does do the emerging class a disservice because me, for example, I mean, the amount of weird test shoots and bad editorials that I did, those are really, really important because it taught me how to work with the photographer, work with clothes, figure mm -hmm. out what my point of view was, figure out what my point of view wasn't. Mm -hmm. um, and I was able to do so without the pressure of having to perform for this big audience. And I don't yeah. think that now that exists. You know, you can't really hide anything. 
And so I think that there is a big pressure to be really good as soon as you start, which some people are not, mm -hmm. you know? So I think, um, I think that there is a danger in that because I think it also means that people don't take a lot of chances. Well, because they're always anticipating the reaction rather than just doing the work because it's what right. they, yeah. I mean, I think there used to be this kind of instinctive, mm -hmm. guttural way to work, which now, to me, for the most part, has been replaced by people who know that something works because it's worked for someone else. Mm -hmm. And so they try to replicate that. Absolutely. Times are changing and culture is shifting. And I think people are hungry for new points of view. Obviously, another very important subject that we talk about kind of with everyone is how the industries progress in terms of diversity. And I think it tends to be focused on talent and kind of the more outward facing aspect of the business. How do you feel about diversity as it applies to the artistry side of it, the designer side of it, the kind of other side of the camera side of it? Is it, is it an issue? Is it, is it accurate? What do, you, what do you feel about that kind of side? I think that it is still a very big issue. Mm -hmm. I think we've come a very long way. But I do think that because diversity is such a huge topic at the moment and because diversity in terms of talent has become so important, I think that it's difficult for me to tell an accurate story about a person of color without having a person of color work on those pictures. I think that the reason that suddenly female photographers have become so important to brands and to magazines is because suddenly people realize that in order to tell a woman's story, maybe it's important to have a woman tell that story. And I feel that the same is true for people of color. Um, I do think that there is a hunger for diverse points of view right now. Mm -hmm. I think that people are really making an effort to include people from different walks of life, not only from different races, but different ages, different backgrounds, different socioeconomic backgrounds. And I think that's really important because fashion in its best form should be about presenting the world that we live in in an accurate way. And so it's nice that we're catching up finally. Do you then feel as though it's often misrepresented um, when that's not the case in terms of who's behind the camera? Definitely. Mm -hmm. I think that black bodies historically have been completely misrepresented. And, and, you know, people of color in general, I think black people have been used as the athletic or the overtly sexual or the extremely glamorous. But, you know, you very rarely see black people being cool or chic or just beautiful mm -hmm. or rich. You know, it's almost like a revelation when you see a black person just looking gorgeous and not super sexy, not oiled up, not, you know. Not fetishized. Precisely. Mm -hmm. And I think that there are people like Tyler whose mission statement is about showing the world that, you know, we're more than than that. How do you describe your style? And, and we've already touched upon the idea that it's beyond the clothes. It's the overall idea that you're working on being a part of and, and creating. How would you describe your voice in that way? Um, I think my work always starts with the person, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. It's always about the casting. I fall in love with people, um, and I like to tell stories about people. When you can define a character, the clothes almost inform themselves, you know, once you understand who this person is and where they live and what they're reading and what their boyfriend or girlfriend does, then you kind of understand, well, that person would never wear that. And what do you find most exciting about the future of the industry that you're now facing? I think that all of the diverse voices, um, it just means that our industry has become so unpredictable. Um, and I find that to be really exciting. I find it re to be really exciting to be working at a time and with a group of people who are so engaged in what's happening in the world and are not afraid of using that to make work. I think previously fashion was all about the facade and there was an element of just phoniness. You know, mm -hmm. everything was always perfect. Everyone looked perfect. Everyone was retouched to death. Now, we're utilizing maybe the dark things and the sad things that are going on in the world, and we're putting that into the work. It, it offers a huge diversity of the types of work that is considered good, and I think it's a really, really exciting time to be making work. Very well said. 
Thank you for the good conversation. Thank you.